Okay, now we want to talk about how a river changes from when it's in the mountains down to uh, the ocean. And then we're also going to be describing some of the structures that form as a result of that. So first, what are some characteristics of a river that changes from the mountain to the sea? So when it's in the mountain, that's going to be upstream. Uh, as it's flowing towards the ocean, that's going to be downstream. So this chart shows that, for example, the discharge is going to increase. So the discharge was the volume per second, volume per unit time. And that's just because there's going to be more tributaries emptying into the river, and each of those tributaries is going to be carrying more and more water. So the amount of water per second is going to increase as you go downstream. Okay, then the next thing is going to be the channel width, again, because the river's carrying more water. Then you've got the channel depth is also going to increase because it's carrying more water. Okay, the velocity is going to increase, and that's because this thing is equal to V times A, where V is the velocity. So if this is increasing, then the velocity is going to increase. And then the load, so the amount of material being carried by the river is going to increase. So the last three things, though, are decreasing. As you go downstream, you find that the particle size so when it's in the mountains, it can carry boulders. It can move boulders when it's in the mountains. But by the time you're in the Mississippi River, it's moving clay-sized particles. Okay, then the next thing is the channel roughness. So when you're in the mountains, you got boulders on the bottom of the river channel. It's very rough. But by the time you get to the Mississippi, remember it's got all that clay, that clay settles and so it covers the bottom of the river channel in clay, and that's very smooth. Okay, and then the last thing is going to be the slope, the angle. So that when it's in the mountains, it's very steep as it's going downhill. But as it approaches the ocean, it's going to start to level out like this. So the slope is getting smaller and smaller the closer you get to the ocean. Okay, uh, what is a graded stream? So this is more vocabulary. You should know what a graded stream is so that when a stream is in equilibrium, what is some characteristics of that stream? Okay, this is the profile. So this thing is a river profile, and so it has to do with gravity. So gravity is going to be shaping the slope of the ground as it approaches the ocean. And rivers want to have a particular profile. And then what happens, though, is if you mess that up, so if you put in a dam here, and then it creates a change in that profile, then what will happen is that this river will erode and this and it will also deposit until it gets back to that original profile that it used to have. So characteristics of a mountain stream, you should know that for the exam. Okay, uh, what is some characteristics of a stream that comes out of the mountains? So notice that this makes a alluvial fan when uh, it's uh, the equivalent of a delta, but it's on the land. And this is because th it slows down, it drops its load, and it starts to deposit material as soon as it comes out of the mountains. Okay, then uh, rivers. So you need to know what meandering is. Okay, so that a river when uh, even a straight river like this, so as it's going downstream, it's in a straight line, 
just tiny little imperfections as it runs into rocks and things will start it to meander. And so it's going to start to do this. And once it starts to meander, the meanders are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So that eventually this thing is going to start to turn into this thing. And then eventually this thing is going to get so large that, let me draw it over here, it's going to do something like this. And then eventually yeah, the river is going to find it's just easier to go this way. And so when it goes directly across, this part over here is going to be left high and dry, and then that turns into an oxbow lake. Uh, now this is very important. Erosion is going to occur on the uh, outer part of a meander. So on this part of the river over here, that's where erosion is going to take place. On this part of the river, so over here, on the inner part of a bend, that's where de deposition is going to occur. So if we go back to this picture here, you can see a good example of that. So on the outer part, it's eroding, and then on the inner part, it is depositing. So make sure and know that for the exam. Okay, there's some other uh, things about a low gradient river that you should know uh, is that they um, make levees. So they make natural levees. So that's this picture here where this is the river channel. So this is the sideways view looking at the river channel. And then when it starts to flood, and then this part here gets filled up with water and then it overflows, then it's going to, again, drop its load when it slows down. So it tends to drop its load right here and right over here. And so those make natural levees which help to protect the floodplain. So you gotta know what a floodplain is. The floodplain is over here and over here and so it's the area that floods whenever the uh, river has an extra large discharge. When it has more water that can go downstream, it's going to overflow its banks onto the floodplain, and then it naturally makes up these mounds on either side, uh, natural levees, that help to protect the floodplain from floods. Okay, another word I'd like for you to know for the exam is a Yazoo tributary. So a Yazoo tributary are little rivers over here and over here that parallel the main river. And then what their job is, is that when a flood occurs and the floodplain is flooded, then these little rivers can drain the water back into the main channel. Okay, then deltas. So you need to know what a delta is and what causes a delta when the river meets the sea. Okay, and then we've already talked about this, uh, that a river is going, wants to have a certain profile, and then if you mess that profile up, then what will happen is the river will deposit in certain places and it's going to erode in other places in order to restore that profile. Okay, another thing that a river can do is it can erode backwards. So it can erode back upstream and then what it can do is sometimes it will connect with another river and it will capture the water that was flowing in that other river. And so we're going to call that stream piracy. Okay, you should know uh, some of the um, types of um, superimposed rivers. So like for example, if on the exam you see a river drainage pattern that looks like this, so that's from the air, so looking down on it, you should know that that's 
a river system that is superimposed on top of a volcano or a mountain. So here's the mountain, and then the rivers are going away from it. So that is called a superimposed river. And you should know about all of those different types of superimposed rivers. Uh, another thing you should know about is um, antecedent streams. So that's another vocabulary word. And it's a river whose downcutting keeps up with the land uplift. An example of this would be the Colorado River uh, in uh, Colorado, so the Grand Canyon, so that it was a meandering river, and then the land was lifted up, and then that river cut down. And so today, uh, the, the Colorado River is in the bottom of the Grand Canyon, and it flows very, very fast. It's a youthful river but yet it's doing this. And that's because originally the Colorado River was an old river. It was on, it had a very, very um, uh, uh, shallow slope. And so it moved very slow, like the Mississippi River. And so it meandered. But then when the Colorado Plateau was uplifted, that river cut down into it very quickly. Okay, another thing, you should know what a terrace is and how terraces form. Okay, let's take a break. When we come back, we will talk about what hazards do rivers pose and then what's the solution to it.